Welcome, friend. We're so glad you joined us today. We thank you for your concern and for choosing our church uh, to worship. We thank you very much. You're always welcome here. Let us give you our order of service. We have Sunday school on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, and we have Sunday morning service starting at 12 o'clock. And on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we have Bible study. And Friday at 6 o'clock, we have evangelistic service. And you're welcome to come to all of our services. And we're soliciting your prayer. Continue to pray for us, and we will pray for you. We are trying to get the word of God to the people. And we solicit your prayer, your support, in whatever way you can. Now let's go to our service that's already in progress. Today we pray that you will word our mouths and someone will be edified and you will be glorified. And someone will be inspired or some aspire to go further in you. Oh God, as your word traveled throughout, oh God, we ask that the word will touch, convince, and convict ones, oh God, that will turn some from their wicked ways and turn to you for help, that we may receive eternal life, that we may spend eternity with you. Bless these that are in the sanctuary, those, oh God, that are in hospital, those that are in uh, confinements of maybe jail, prison, incarcerated, and oh God, there are those that are just bound by circumstance. Don't feel good about themselves. Very low self-esteem. Oh God, as we come today, give us words of wisdom that they may too know that God loves them as we know he loves us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We thank God uh, today for his goodness. We thank God for uh, waking us this morning after a peaceful night's rest on last night. We thankful to God that uh, no strong wind disturbed our rest. No house fire disturbed our rest. No uh, uh, thieves or intruders disturbed our rest. No sickness or discomfort that disturbed our rest. And uh, the Lord woke us up early this morning. Started us on our way. We had the full activity of our limbs and we, we were uh, uh, inspired to start this day out. Start this day out <laughs> uh, uh, worshiping, praising, and glorifying him. Let's, let her hear the word too. We want her to hear to praise the Lord. God is just so good. God is so good. I know she's tired, but We'll be through in a minute, so <laughs> it does. I'm tired too, so so if I can if I can work, we can sit and listen to the word. Praise God. I want to talk to us uh, today from uh, a subject of God's love. Anybody ever heard the word love? Yeah. We we hear that word passed around so loosely. Let the world tell it, everybody loves somebody. But when we see the activity and action, how much love is in that? Just about every night when you turn on the news, do you hear about love? You hear about bang, 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 bang. That's not love, that's hate. You can't love somebody and shoot at them at the same time. I'm gonna show you how much I love you, boo. No, that's not love. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, because God is love, if we love God, then we love one another. You can't say you love God and can't stand the people 
that you deal with every day. The Bible says we are a liar and the truth is not in us. And I'll add to it. And you shouldn't have from the scripture. I say there's no way about you. You can't, you can't love God and can't stand. Now you may have to learn some people. Now I find some people it's hard for me to love. Some people it's even hard for me to deal with. But I still can't develop a hate just because it's hard for me to deal with. I have to ask God to give me more patience, more tolerance, because some people look like they're just set out to get on your last nerve. Praise God. You look like the more they throw you off and upset you, the happier they are. Praise God. So, so we just have to ask God to help us. I mean, no, we can't do it by ourselves. You've got to ask God to help you. You may know somebody that got on your last nerve, you know, but you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. Some of you going on your job tomorrow. You got to deal with it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, 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 I want to, it said God love. And I'm going to give you some inspirational Bible scriptures. Everything that we do that's uh, pertaining to God should be founded and backed up by the scripture. If you can't find it in, in the scripture or anything concerning it, it's not worth discussing. It's not worth discussing. Anything you do, it should be Bible-based. Marriage, Bible-based. To death do us part, Bible-based. And we got to pray. We got to pray. Oh, by the way, that that's I set myself up for an announcement. Lord have mercy. I set myself up for an announcement. What is the 29th of this month? What what day is that on? How many? Saturday coming? Okay. Well now you know what that is, don't you? It will be 49 years. Go ahead. 49 years since somebody fell down on their knees and begged somebody, please marry me. And I said yes. I approved that message. 49 years. You say, how did you do it? Time flies when you're having fun. It really does. Time flies. You know, I don't look at that as 49 years. You know what I look at? One day at a time. That's where I've always done that. One day at a, at a time. And if you enjoy every day, tomorrow will hurry up and go. You ever try to go through a day and nothing went right? That's a long day. <laughs> so we've had some, some short days, some long days, some happy days, and some proud days. Do you not know it takes prayer to stay married? You can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. Some people divorce over, uh, you burnt my biscuit. Your, your coffee was too black, too strong. Let's get to honor. Let's get to honor. Praise God. Praise God. But I thank God for, I'm thanking in advance. We'll be making it to Saturday. So I'm thanking for 49 years. So that'll be one year, one year short of half of a century. A century and 100 years, we would have been married 50 years. So I think that's pretty good. Don't you, honey? Don't you, honey? They won't say what now. Amy, you ought to see that smile back there. <laughs> She's blushing on amen and blushing away. But I thank God for my wife. I really do. I really do. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, we're going to get back to script. I'll be honest. I had to learn how to be a husband. She's the only one that I had a chance to practice on. <laughs> and she stuck with it. You know why? Because she was in jail. Praise, <laughs> praise God. So, so, so I, I do. I seriously, I thank God for that. Adam was up. We, we, we had four children, or well, six with the two that we read that, that God blessed us with. Praise God. No more. Those are those no more. Those, 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 four plus two. So, so don't nobody come running up to my high dad. No such a thing. <laughs> Praise God. No, 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 no. But I do thank God for that. Praise God. All right, so keep keep us in mind. I told y'all when I get to the fifty, 
I'm starting at one, two, you know, just keep in mind that that 50, and I'm not even counting those, you understand? So this 50, praise God, we, 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 don't ask us where we're going. We're going somewhere, if it's nowhere but in the backyard. So, <laughs> so we're going somewhere for our uh, 50th anniversary. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. God, how many people listen to you? Do you believe God loves you? Young people there, but do you believe God loves you? Well, you can say yes. I'm not going to ask you why. Amen. He, and why? He doesn't love you because you've been so good. He doesn't love me because I've been so good. He loves us because he is love, and he loves every one of us. Praise God. And since he loves us, we ought to love him and love one another. Children, how many love your parents? Do it while they're not watching. How many don't love your parents? You better keep your hand down. Praise God. So I know you love your parents. Praise God. All right, now I'm gonna now you can write these scriptures down if you care to. It's gonna be a bunch of them. So we may can't get through all of them today, but we're going to uh, 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 start out. Number one, features Bible verses about God love. Romans 8, 37 through 39. It said, No, in all these things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else, and all the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's the first uh, scripture that tells us that the Lord loves us. And here's one that all of us know, John 3.16. What did it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's proof. That's proof that God loves us. Now it, it just almost gives me goosebumps to think about how much God loves us because I have not, listen to me good, I have not really appreciated God in the past the way I do now. I didn't understand in the past like I understand now just how much God loved me. So when someone loves you, it inspires you to do what? Love them in return. That ought to be so cruel. Somebody loves you. It's hard to do. You got to be really cruel to just shoot at somebody that brings you a gift every week. <laughs> this time you go, bang, but they don't got to run and get away. Next week they come back, you ambush them before they get to your house. But you okay. That would be cruel, wouldn't it? They are proving that they love you. Anybody that's dogging you out, just start loving them. I didn't say making love. I said start loving them. Okay, I got to qualify that. You know? It's hard for people to do you wrong. When, and I'm gonna tell you, it takes a lot of patience to do somebody good and they're doing you wrong. It takes a lot of patience. Can I get an amen? I just want to make sure I'm talking to live people. Praise God. I'm going to pick the TV leg and can't say it, but you can say amen, Pastor. Amen. Praise amen. God. Say, give us another one, Pastor. Give us another Pastor. All right. Thank you. God's love is shown through Jesus Christ. God's love is shown through his son, Jesus Christ. And amen. we just quoted that one uh, earlier. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his own on the Son, that whosoever believeth, what to be living, believeth, can't just believe it today, you got to keep on Believe. believing. Amen. And whosoever believeth should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That was two. The third, the third scripture is coming from Romans 5 and 8. Romans, the fifth chapter, and the eighth verse. And it said, but God shows his love for us in that while 
while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And some people that we know are yet sinners. All of these years hereafter or thereafter, some are yet living in sin and seem to enjoy it. Have you ever seen a sinner look like they were happy sinning? They're, they're good actors. They're living a lot. It's no fun in sin. It may seem to be. It may be for a moment. But the end thereof is what? Death. Spiritual death and maybe physical death. I mean, no. One lady says sin will kill you. Well, sin will kill you. Praise God. Have you ever seen anybody that seemed to be old enough for your mama or daddy, but they were young enough to be your child? Why do you think they look so rough? Sin. Sin will kill you. Every one of us right now. When you look in the mirror, you look better than you did 20 years ago. I ain't talking about the baby, because you're not even 20 years old. You look better now than you did then. You know why? You came out of sin. He beautified the, 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 the meat with what? Salvation. And then once you get saved, turn around, children, turn around. Once you get saved, you, you, you look better. You know why you look better? Number one, because you feel better. The better you feel, the better you look. Praise the Lord. Have you ever gone anywhere and you didn't feel like going? Say what you want. You looked rough when you got there. Because you didn't, you, you. I mean, I know you dress up like you feel up. If you feel good, you want to dress up. And if you don't feel good, you want to keep a house coat on all day. Sandals on all day. Curlers on all day. Curtain glow all day. Drape your mirror. You don't want to see it when you walk by. All day. Why? You look rough. <laughs> Three o'clock in the evening. Oh, my will get up. So what? It'll be night in a few minutes. My will stay on in the bed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going, we're going now to uh, our fourth scripture. Galatians, the second chapter and the 20th verse. So those of you that did not bring in pencil and paper, you're going to miss something today. Praise the Lord. Uh, Galatians, uh, 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 the second chapter, 20 verse said, I have been crucified, this is Paul now, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but who? Christ who lives in who? Me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now who is this Son of God? What's his name? Jesus. He died for us. Most of us won't even give our time to help somebody in need, let alone your life. You ain't even giving your life. You ain't even giving your sleep. Mama, Daddy, when you come over here, what time is it, boy? What time is it, girl? Three o'clock. I ain't getting up this time of night. I'm in the bed. But I'm sitting back on having a hard time. Well, take a pill. <laughs> Call me in the morning. I'm tired. My sleep is more important. No, Jesus died for us while we were yet. Why are we so sharp people with other people? Why? God had patience with us. Why we don't have patience with people? Why? We just don't have enough patience. We need to pray and ask God to give us more patience. Praise the Lord. Uh, the fifth one, Ephesians, the second chapter, four and the fifth verse, Paul and yet right. Wrote to the Romans, he wrote to the Galatians, and now he's writing to the Ephesians, the church at Ephesus. It said, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Jesus died for you and I by his grace that gives us a 
And what did God do? He gave his only begotten son. So it wasn't on what God did, it was what his son did. What did his son do? His son gave his life for us when we were considered nobody. No good. Amen. Good for nothing. How good would it be? Think about it. Think about it. Jesus paid the debt. Think about it now. Everybody in here and out there, most likely you owe somebody something. You owe somebody something. It may not be a house note. Your house may be paid for, but you owe taxes. Summer and winter. You say, well, I got a car paid for. Maybe you do. But you owe a registration fee, a license fee, and your land. You may say, my children are paid for. They're all grown. They're going to hit you up regularly. I don't care how I grow. I guarantee you. you okay. See, y'all sit up in now. Young people got to choose. Say, I'll be so mad. All of my kids will be grown next year. You think you're going to have a lot of money after that? Watch them see. Watch them see. They're going to nickel and dime you to death. You watch them see. Man. Watch them see. You, want, you be wondering, how am I going to die? You worried of the death. Praise God. you grown, but you ain't gone. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So Jesus died for us. How would it be? Now think about, don't tell nobody, don't think out loud. Think about all the debt that you owe and will owe as long as you live, like consumer power. He ain't going away. Consumer power can go on vacation. Praise God. How would it be if somebody took you down to the courthouse and had you sign legal document giving them permission to pay all of your present bills and your future bills as long as you shall live. Amen. Amen. Would you shoot them at the end of the day? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's how glad we ought to be for Jesus who paid the debt for us. Who paid the debt for us. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Now we're going to the sixth one. Uh, First John uh, chapter six, verses nine through 11. We talk about God's love. And, and it reads, in this the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he, meaning God, loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Pastor Grid didn't make that up. That's in the scripture. So we really don't have an excuse for not loving one another. And most certainly, we don't have an excuse for not loving God. Maybe the people that you should love haven't done anything. But Jesus made the difference. He died that we may have the right to love one another and to inherit eternal life. How many know we're going to spend eternity somewhere? Amen. We're going to spend eternity somewhere. Just like you living in this city. Whether you rent a house, whether you buy a house, whether you lease a house, you got to live somewhere. Just can't. You say, well, some people do exist and don't have a home. God forbid. I hope we don't get to that. There's some people that are really homeless. Now, I'm not putting anybody down, but I'm just saying we who can would rather live in our own home. Is that right? Praise God. You may not pay. You may not pay somebody across town, but I advise you to pay your house note. I advise you to pay your house note because there's no fun being homeless. Praise God. But I'm talking about uh, 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 if somebody paid your debt, you wouldn't know how to act. We have been we have been a slave all of our life. 
We are slaves to our debtor. Who is our debtor? Whoever we owe. We are a slave to them. Consumers in the way you like it or not, you may fuss all the way out there. But you're going to take that money, am I right? You may drive by that person live next door that you haven't paid, been on them three or four years. But you ain't going to try going three or four years with consumer money. And you don't pay the cable company because you like them movies. You like them soap operas. You can't be without that. So you got to pay them. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. You got to watch the comedian. <laughs> but Jesus paid the debt that we may have a spiritual life, a natural life, a physical life, a social life. That's good, but there's no life that compared with a fully saturated spiritual saved life. You can't beat being saved. You can't beat that with a hickory stick in the wintertime. And those of you that know anything about hickory and oak, that is hard. Hard oh, pine is soft, you know, you know. But you can't be go. Oh, how many love? I mean, how many love? We have no reason. I'm trying. I'm trying to give us a greater appreciation for God. It is very important that we love God. Okay, God's love. He loves and cares for us. See, sometimes the enemy will beat us down. Have us to think, just because you didn't get along with the person next door, we blame God. I ain't going back to church no more. So and so look at me, I was worn out. <laughs> Did you ever stop to think they didn't have but one and it wasn't working good? Uh -huh. They were staring at me and they couldn't ask me. And a lot of people I, I meet, I, Lord, I, I meet so many people that I don't know. Mother, they speak to me and say, man, how you doing, Pastor Britt? How you doing, Elder Britt? How you doing, Mr. Britt? I just by categorizing those that say, Pastor Britt, you be from our <coughs> church. Those that say, Reverend Britt, they you be from another church, not necessarily ours. Those that say, Mr. Britt, you be know me from school. So it's so many, many, many people know me, and I don't know them. Some I knew when they were 10 years old, 9 years old, when I was teaching in the lower in elementary school. They were grown. Some of them grandmas, grandpas. They still remember me. You know? Oh, Mr. Green, you look just like you always did. And what they're good at saying that you're beautiful, you're handsome. That's what they're saying. <laughs> that's, that's what I read it to. You understand? They may not mean that, but if you cry out there, but don't tell them. I think you're saying, Mr. B, you just as handsome as you always were. And I said, thank you, thank you. And I run on them before they change their mind. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, when you don't get many compliments, you know, I would tell you sometimes I'd be walking with my wife and they say, oh, you looking good. I said, thank you. They wasn't talking to me, but I just grabbed it. I run away. Man, you don't get many compliments. You were, you still one, you plain. Praise the Lord. We were walking together one time and, and a man took another man camera out of his hand and took out a picture. I know when he got in the building, he took mine off. Oh, but anyway, but I, at least I was over there for a little while. Praise, praise the Lord. See, when you're not that good looking yourself, you try to find a, a, a woman that's showing up good looking so it can make it count of hair is out. You understand? Praise the Lord. Yeah, you see, a monkey ain't got no business with marriage, go really. <laughs> praise, 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 praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Moving right along to the seventh one. <laughs> okay. Zephaniah, the third chapter, the 17th verse. We still talk about God's love, the love of God. The Lord, your God, is in your midst. Where is your midst? Right around you. In you. All everywhere. You just reach out and touch it. A mighty one who will save. How many believe the Lord will save? He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will uh, 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 
exude over you with loud singing. In other words, God is so glad for you. You just be knocked off your feet if you could feel the love that God feels for you. God loves you and I more than we love ourselves. Now you know how I know we don't love ourselves like we ought to. We say we do. We say we do. But a lot of things that we do is against us. Doctor told you you got high blood pressure. Stay away from that salt. What do you do? You better go get me some salt. Some people, they get the salt. No, they don't take it. They, they sit down and eat. First thing they read for, not the silverware, salt chair. <laughs> How you know, David, always been great. <laughs> you gonna eat all that salt. Diabetic. I want a small cup of coffee with eight sugars. Now, what are they supposed to do? You're killing yourself. Stay away from the pork. Give me two ham hocks. <laughs> two, two pounds of bacon. Man, honey, I don't feel so good. I guess not. You're killing yourself. Doc said drink plenty of water. You got infection in your system. Give me a case of Pepsi. <laughs> Don't have a taste for water. We're killing ourselves, but yet we love ourselves. Set up in the dark, read. How you gonna read in the dark? Turn on some light. Praise the Lord. How many love yourself as much as God loves you? None of us. How many love God more than we love the people that we know? All of us. We might well be honest, because we find some people are more. You know, some people, if you hear that name, it kind of makes you want to scratch your head and, and just, just hear it. Oh, don't make that man to me. I love a good line. You hate them. You stare at your daddy. Praise God. But we got, listen, that's why the Lord tells us to pray for our enemy. Because if you don't, you start learning to hate them. And we can't see God in face and peace with hate in our heart. Now we have to pray. We have to ask God to help us. Help us. Praise the Lord. I can't think of anybody that I don't love. Then Slim walk in that door. Oh, Lord. <laughs> How did he know I was coming to church? Get him out. I said, why are you letting him up there? Ten, you got to go outside, hit the side door, get in your car, and go home. <laughs> Pray God, we got to learn to love everybody. I'm not saying it's easy. I have to struggle too. I remember some people that I didn't have such a good relationship with. I remember that, but I have to pray. You know, some of them I'll never see them all. And uh, some of them did go. I really have to pray that God will forgive me because I might have had some thoughts and didn't get a chance to repent. You understand? So it's God. God is gracious. And he, he, he is long suffering. So that's why we have to try to keep it together every day because we don't know which day is going to be our last day. Number eight, First John, uh, the fourth chapter, verse seven and eight. I'm still talking about God's love. Beloved. That's talking about us. Let us love one another. Living water. I'm not going to call y'all be love. Living water. Let us love one another. I'm not going to say go and hug somebody's neck or y'all may get tangled up. <laughs> you may hug somebody that may, may not be good. You don't know me. You don't know me. A little bit of you go a long way. You get away from me. You go you can tell, you can tell. Lord, I hope they don't come this way. <laughs> you ever see somebody waving at you, you don't like you look the other way ten, you can see you saw it. You saw it, you just eager them, you didn't know it. Why do that man? Can't you stand? But I'm going to heaven. I'm so glad. When the saints go marching in, I'm gonna be in that number. You're gonna be in a number, all right. If you don't get it together, you're gonna be in a number. <laughs> Head down, young. Praise God. Praise God. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from where? From God. And whoever love has been, whoever love has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. 
because God is love. You can't beat that there. This is plain as day. When the sun is shining at noon, they bright and clear. How many understand where I'm coming from? How many understand what I'm saying? I hope you write this down, but you may think I'm making it up. This is scripture. This is scripture. We have no excuse not to love. And I'm not going to tell you to go home and go down the block looking to see who you love. You may hate everybody you see, so stay home. Mm. Pray to God. Number nine, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, six and seven verse. Humble yourself. Now that's hard. Most of us are exalted, I would say. Well, who knows what normal you said? What does it mean? Just put your hand up if you know. You know what? I'm not going to ask you. Okay? Assuming everybody in here don't know. Humble yourself means to take low and listen to the voice of God. Don't be a know-it-all when it comes to holiness. Yeah, I know everything. I go to that church on the corner. Does that make you know everything because you go to the church down on the corner? Who knows everything? Nobody but God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. They know everything. We are learning every day. Every day. I hear my daddy say, if boy is enough that I don't know to write two or three books. Matter of fact, I said a whole lot more. I watch Jeff. Anybody ever watch Jeff? They make me sick. I don't know any of that stuff. I said, where do you get all those men off the front? And then some of them beat you. Are you smarter than a second grader? Fifth grader, whatever? Sometimes I wonder if I'm smarter than a head start. <laughs> you know why these young people? I have a little grandson. Stand up, Justin. Tell off on you. Stand up. Stand up. I had him to show me how to download an app on my phone. <laughs> and he a little third grade, little eighth grade, little eight-year-old now. You know what he did? I asked him proud. He come tell me, listen, I had to help grandpa. <laughs> I said, boy, you didn't have to help nothing. <laughs> but if he had to, somebody else would have to help but, uh, See, I'm the late boomer. This stuff is new to me. A lot of this stuff is new to me. I got a phone. I was just reading. It said I can program to turn like a player. My CD player, I can speak to it. It said, play track three, and then track. And I said, skip it. Then stop. Rewind. I got to figure out how to do it. That didn't make, this is a smart baby. This is a smart baby. I can do it like this. Bump my head and dial. Who ever know? Don't have to say nothing. That's a bad boy. That other one bad too. It's so smart he jumped out of my pocket and then jumped down on the ground and I ran over the lawn trying to chew it up in many pieces. Praise God. All this new stuff, I don't know how to, how to do this. Right. And if so, I'm surprised he hadn't done it. He said, he'll whistle. Well, why? I said, what? I said, it's my, I started to say stupid. It's my smartphone. <laughs> I mean, it was sound like a real word. She said, that's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> Somebody walked by me. <laughs> I said, I hope not. Uh, I can figure out what I was doing and how to stop it from doing it. Well, don't tell me the whistle. I really whistled at me. But, but this morning, take me out. The one that I lost was a, 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 a Galaxy 1. This is Galaxy 4. Yeah. <laughs> we was in a discussion, I'm going, we was in a discussion one day, and a bunch of preachers were sitting around, nobody could come to a consensus, and I held it down and typed in a few keywords, and I read, and I said, you know what occurred to me? <laughs> <laughs> and I read it two or three times, I said, you know what occurred to me? And I started telling them, I didn't even 
didn't know I was on pro. That's a terrible thing. Then when I walked in, marching in, uh, at a funeral, marching in, and one of the preachers said, uh, Pastor, where did you get my message? I said, what message? I ain't got no message. He said, man, you ought to read the New Testament scripture. I said, what? I took the phone. And I was talking. I said, an appropriate scripture, New Testament scripture for a film. <laughs> Gave me three or four that I could choose from. And I picked one, I clicked it, printed it out right there on the screen. I sit up there. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I read it with authority. Didn't even know anything about it. See how man it can make it. I find all of y'all. You better get you something ready because you don't never know when you go somewhere. We don't call on sister so-and-so. She, she goes to that church on the corner. I know she's ready. Then you get up there, flop, pass out. Pass out. You miss it there and you show sure that better get you something. Because they're calling. They're calling. I had to go to a film once and, and I didn't know the preacher couldn't read. I'm not putting anybody down, but he couldn't read. And he would mark the people there and he said, Lord, say one, two, and then he would say, no, 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 no. They like that. I said, I said, I, I, I see that somebody battery was telling off on you. See, they smart on you. Yeah, yeah. See, next time you're gonna bring the church charge it up before you come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not trying to embarrass you, but you just come out like that sometimes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you hadn't been playing the game, it wouldn't be dead. Praise the Lord. But, 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 but. Things happen. You never know when you're going to get put on the spot. Man. I'm trying to tell you, the Bible said, be ready at all times. Be ready. All right. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hands of God. Why is God's hands so mighty? Because he's able to do anything he wants to do. So that at the proper time, he may exalt you. What they saw you? Promote you. He can, he can promote you uh, financially. How many would like to make more money? Oh, no, you wouldn't be wanting no more money. He can promote you financially. He can promote you socially. You can be on the, in an organization. He can promote you to the top. I don't want to be the top of that organization. They don't pay that organization leader, but three million dollars a year, but you don't want to be it. You don't want to be it. You'd rather work for 30000 than to be getting three million. So keep on working. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. How many would like a brand new car? God is able to give you one of those. I've heard of people saying that people, God put certain people on their heart and they gave. I heard somebody preaching about they got brand new jets, brand new plane, didn't have to pay a dime for it. Somebody uh, gave it to him. One preacher only said he hadn't bought a, a suit in years. And he got so many suits he can't even find time. Well, somebody gives them to him. Then you're saying, why not me, Lord? The Lord may say, why don't you step up and be a little more involved in my work? You know, I mean, no blessings come through people. So get out and meet people. I don't go nowhere but to my local church. You ain't going to meet nobody but your local people. And they're the same boat that you in. You in it. I don't know some rich people around. It's a millionaire. It's a billionaire looking for a wife. Would you? Would you? Would, would, would you want? Would you want to be? Listen, listen, listen to this. Would you want to be Mrs. Billionaire? <laughs> or Mr. Billionaire? It's a rich woman around too. Broke husband, it's a rich millionaire woman. One woman said when she getting ready to die, everything she owns going to charity. And she's a billionaire. Ain't married to nobody. I know y'all dismiss my service now. Stay on with it. Can't get married. I ain't performing no marriage. 
today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Casting all your anxiety, meaning your cares, on him because he cared for you. Now, how many people in here are having anxiety attack? Don't raise your hand. Just kind of look up at me. do that. Because you raise your hand up by looking to see. That means you're anxious. You just can't wait to get out of debt. You're so anxious to pay out of debt until you just get broke. Pay all your money. Don't you know you can't get out of debt paying on your big bill? How do you get out of debt? Pay your little bills off. Pay all the little bills off. Then what you're paying on the little bill, double up and pay it on the next higher bill. Pay that off. Then whatever you're paying in, oh no, I got to go get in debt. No. Take that and invest in another. And pretty soon you will have paid them all up. You ain't never heard of that, did you? Now, I'm telling you, now I got to learn to do it. But it works. It works. If you don't owe the $25, why well, pay on that for two years? Interest eating it up. Just pay the $25 off and be through with it. Then pay that and put on your next higher be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But you got to humble yourself. And that God may exalt you. How many, how many God has blessed with, with some talent? I know any degree of talent. Anybody got any talent in this Am I talking to dead folk or what? Anybody even got any kind of talent or skill you can do something? Amen. Amen. Don't you know if you humble yourself, God can intensify that talent? and that skill and make it better. And if somebody tell you, oh, I enjoyed your hair, oh, I didn't know you would, but I tell you, I know I, I really laid it on today. Is that all I'm just saying? No, you brag. What's going to happen next time you get a fall flat as a flapjack on your face? We cannot exalt ourselves. Who is trying to me to get a promotion? No, just do your work. Be the best work of that. Amen. Yeah, well, if you're a producer, be the best producer of that. And people will see your work. Amen. Come early, leave late. You'll get a promotion. But if you come late and leave early, what's going to happen? Five. You won't get a promotion, you'll get fired. Amen. You come late and leave early, you will get fired. So we have to do what? Humble. You're safe. Uh -huh. Now we are going uh, to the tenth one. Said uh, Job. Anybody ever heard of Job? Job uh, 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 was kind of like the father of patience. Man, he had some patience. Praise the Lord. Amen. Job. Hmm. Did us? Yeah, okay. I gotta try to make sure I didn't skip one. Job, who shows no partiality to princes, nor regard the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hand. That's what Job said about God. Job, Job, oh I'm sorry. That was Job the 34th of chapter 19 verse. Job was saying God was not partial. God does not care any more for the rich than he does for us. Let me rephrase that. For me. I don't know how I read y'all. But God does not love the rich any more than he regards the common man and woman. Okay? For they are all the work of God's hand. How I many know God made everybody? Yeah. He made the rich, he made the poor, and he said the poor you will have with you always. When you check out of here, you're going to leave some poor people. I hope they don't be in your family, God. When you share your inheritance with them, they may not be poor anymore. They're going to have what you got. Praise God. The poor you will have with you always. So if you happen to hit hard times, don't feel rain right on. God loves you just as much if you lose all your money and as he did when you had all of it. Job lost almost everything. But God restored and gave him back more than he lost. Double for your trouble. Sometimes God has a way of kind of snatching away what you got so he can give you something better. 
And the Lord said, well, I, 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 you got one car to rock, and you got a pumper. You know what a pumper is? Yeah. Almost a push mobile. You got a ton, and God wants to give you a brand new car, and he done allowed you to be in a wreck three times in that old right the car. And every time you take it and have it fixed, it sure God would give you a new one, but you're hanging on to that rag and mobile. You see what I'm saying? And then when you get a new, you say, Ooh, Lord, what took you so long? God said, Man, I've been trying to get that rag and thing out of you, but you're holding on to it. Praise God. <laughs> oh, it's for sentimental reasons. You can't drive in the outside. Yeah. You get the last that's going down. <laughs> so, you, so God wants you to lose it. And so he can give you something better. Sometimes God will let a fluid come. Mess up all your clothes in the basement so you can throw them away so they give you some new. You know all that stuff you had in the basement that burned when you had that fluid. You understand? <laughs> now you got to go and get you something there. <laughs> My wife had some bad hats and she wouldn't pull one out. They were messed up in the war. I said, Lord, I'm a, but she still got one of the bad ones. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I told her, I said, honey, you wearing you that hat? You wearing that hat? Praise, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then, all right. Now, I'm going to soon let you go. Soon let you go. Okay, I'm going to get to do this. Psalms 86 uh, numbers and verse 15. But you, this is what the psalm said. But you, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. Can you attest to that? God is merciful and God is gracious. And I he said another thing. God said, you are slow to anger. God put up a lot of stuff before he get mad at us. And abounding in steadfast love Steadfast love. And what is steadfast? I love you a little while until you do something, get on there, you go around and act too. Wouldn't that be a beautiful God? You wake up in the morning. Good morning, love. You know you don't be one of them. You ever go to work on Monday morning, happy to have a good service? Good morning. Mm -hmm. Look at you like you think you're crazy because you've been job. I did that one day when they wanted to work in it. <gasps> they wanted to say, what's so good about it? I said, you lie. They said, so. Some people don't even appreciate waking up. How do you know this is a good day to be alive? Amen. This is a good day to be alive. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. You know you got to go to work some of you. Today, forget about tomorrow. Today is a good day to be alive. And I'm going to let you hear me on the scene. I'd rather be standing here now, standing here, talking to you, than to be in the most elaborate graveyard there is. I'd rather be here. Amen. Don't care about being broke, because I know tomorrow or tomorrow is tomorrow. I'm going to have some more money. See, you're going to have some more money. You may have given all the way and all for the day. But I guarantee God going to see you through tomorrow. I guarantee you. And if you work it, I guarantee you, you'll get a payday. And if you're, if you're a man of God, I guarantee God will sustain you. You may not have no check, but if you don't have that check, somebody's going to be touched by God. They're going to walk up and give you something. I guarantee you that. If you put your trust in God, God will make a way. Why? Because He loves you. He loves you. Hey, look, now I'm going to have you to do something. Yep. Then I'm going to dismiss you. When everybody in here get up and go tell just two people, say, God loves me and God loves you. Do it right now. So you get through doing it, I'm going to let you go. Yeah. Now when you tell two people, go and sit down. When you tell two people, go and sit down. Any two people. See, them, those, those back there didn't hear me, see. See, they, they didn't. Mother White go and tell them. They, they're too tired to come and tell you. Go tell them. <laughs> go and tell them. Get off the phone and talk to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, now I made you a promise. I made you a promise. And I thank God. I thank God 
that he is some more, but time, time won't go ahead. But God is good. Give God some hands and prayer. I share this with you. What I would like, I would like you to take this home and read it again yourself. And then and it wouldn't hurt you to read it every day. Because so the devil will have you thinking that God doesn't love you. He make you think you the bottom of the total. Because said, no, I'm not, devil. You got a mind that God, God loves me. And I'm somebody. I am somebody. And start treating yourself like you're somebody. You don't, you don't take the back seat to anybody. You are, I look at it this way. I don't feel like I'm better than anybody else. But I certainly feel like I'm just as good as anybody else. I'm not going to let you walk over me like I'm a dope man and I'm dirt. I'm a nobody. I am somebody. I am somebody. I am somebody. God bless me. Praise the Lord. God bless your heart. Give God some hands. Okay, that may be something right now, you know, then we're going to go. That may want a special prayer. The devil been whipping a fit on you for the last few days. If you feel like you want prayer, stand right now. It's not going to be long. All right, anybody just stand right now. The devil is, the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. The devil, is, that's what he does. He wants to feel like you, 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 you are all, you're all of, of that. And uh, repeat out the message. Uh, the children say, I will. Be obedient. Because the pastor asked me to stay off my phone. Said he caught me two or three times after he told me. I didn't know he saw me, but he did. Praise God. All right, dear God, these that are standing, these that are standing, God, we thank you for the word that you have brought. We thank you, God. Those that require special prayer. I'm not even asking what the needs are, but God, you know everything. You know their needs. God, we ask that you minister to their needs and grant them their request. And I'm counted by faith and thanking you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. If all minds are clear, tell me.